Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woebegone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish moist and fever dew, and on thy cheek a fading rose, fast withered too. I met a lady in the meads, full of beauty, a fairy shrub. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were long. I made a garland for her hair, and graced it in a fragrant zone. She looked at me as she did love, and made sweet hair. I set her on my face and steam, and nothing else saw all day long. For sidelong would she then in search of fairness. She found me roots of relish sweet and honey wine and manna dew, and sure in language strange she said, I love you too. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept, and she strange she felt. I love thee too. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept and sighed also. And there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for her. And there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed, ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamt. On the cold hillside, I saw pale kings and princes too. Pale warriors, death pale were they. They cried, La Belle Dame, so merci, had we been thrown. I saw their starved lips in the gloom, with horrid woman gaping wide, and I awoke and found me here on the cold hillside. And that is why I sojourn here alone and palely loitering, though the sedge is withered on the lake and no birds sing.
She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies and all that's best of dark and bright. There was a ship. Nay, it has got a last. The mariner, come with me. The rhyme of the ancient mariner. Thy long grey beard and thy bitter passion, and wherefore stop this pain? Thy green doors open wide, and thy next kin. The guests are met, the feast is set, best here the merry din. There was a ship, nay, it has got a pass, a mariner travelling me. Get me hence, my grey beard loose, or my star shall make me skip. Sun came up upon the left, out of the sea came he, and he shone bright, and on the right went down into the sea. Higher and higher every day, till over the mast at noon. When the guest he beat his breast, for he heard the loud bassoon. The bride hath paced into the hall, red as a rose. Nodding their heads before her goes the merry minstrelsy. The wedding guest he beat his breast, yet he cannot choose but hear. And thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. Listen, stranger, storm and wind, the wind and tempest strong, for days and weeks it played us freaks, like chaff we drove along. Listen, stranger, mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold, and ice mast high came floating by, as green as emerald. And through the drift, Snowy cliffs did send a dismal sheen. The shapes of men or beasts we can, the ice all between. The ice was here, the ice was there, the ice was all around. It cracked, growled, roared, and howled like noises in a swell. At length did cross an albatross, o'er the fog again. And it were a Christian soul, we hailed it in God's name. The mariners gave it biscuit worms, round and round it flew. The ice did split with a thunder fit, the helmsman steered us through. And a good south wind sprung up behind, the albatross did follow. And every day, for food or play, came to the mariner's hollow, in mist or cloud. A mast or shroud, it perched for Vespers nine. As all the night through fog smoke white, glimmered the white moonshine. Not safe. Why looks thou so? With my crossbow, I shot the albatross. The sun came up upon the right, out of the sea came he, and broad as a weft upon the left went down into the sea. And the good south wind still blew behind, but no sweet bird did follow, nor any day for food or play came to the mariner's hollow. And I had done an hellish thing, and it would work em woe, for all of earth. I had killed the bird that made the breeze to blow. Not dim, nor red, like God's own head, the glorious sun uprist. Then all avert, I had killed the bird that brought the fog and mist 
"'Twas right, said they, such birds to slay "'that bring the fog and mist. "'The breezes blew, the white foam flew, "'the furrow followed free. "'We were the first that ever burst into that silent sea. "'Down dropped the breeze, the sails dropped down. "'Sad as sad could be, and we did speak only to break the silence of the sea. All in a hot and copper sky, the bloody sun at noon, right up above the mast it stands no bigger than the moon. Day after day, day after day, we stuck, a breath, no motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, all the boards did shake. Water, water everywhere. Make any drop to drink. And deep to drop. Oh Christ, that ever this be. Yea, slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea. About, about in reel and rout, the death fires danced at night. Water, like a witch's oils, burnt green and blue and white. And some in dreams assured were of the spirit that plagued us so. Nine fathom deep he had followed us from the land of mist and snow. And every tongue through utter drought was withered in the fruit. We could not speak no more than if we had been choked with soot. Oh, well a day, what evil looks had I from old and young. Instead of the cross, the albatross about my neck was hung. I saw a something in the sky. A bit of a night. Oh, what can ail thee, night at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, night at arms, so haggard? And so and it dodged the water sprite, it hung, the and granary and is full, and the harvest with done. Unslaked, with I see spade, a lily on thy brow, nowhere. with anguish moist, Wild and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose, and cast with a sail, a sail, with throat I unslaked, a lady with black lips made, again they heard full me call. A Grand mercy, they for joy did grin, and all her at once their breath long, drew in as they were drinking was all. Light, and her eyes she did not tack from side wide. to side. Hither to work as wheel, out and wind, without an eye, she steadies, and not like a keel. She looked at me as she did love, and, there was and one made done. sweet moon. Almost upon the western wave rested. I set her on sun. my pacing steed. When that strange shape drove saw, suddenly betwixt us and the sun. For side long, and straight the sun was flecked with bars. Heaven's mother sent us grace, as if she were found me roots of relish and, and, and honey wild and manna dew. And sure, in language strange, she fast said, she hears I love her. Are those her sails that glance in the sun like restless gossamers? Are these her naked ribs which fleck the sun that did behind them peer? In language are strange, these two she all, said, all the I love thee true. That woman and her fleshless fear. Well, in language strange, is burned she said, for black, I love thee black, true. All black and bare, I be. In language Jet black strange, and bare, she said, Say where with rust of mouldy damps and charnel crust they're patched with purple and green. Her lips are red, her looks are free, her locks are yellow as gold, her skin is white as leprosy, and she is far like her death than he. Her flesh makes the still air cold. The naked hulk alongside came, and the twain were playing dice. The game is done, I've won, I've won, said she, and whistled a cry. A gust of wind stirred up behind, and whistled through his bones, through the holes of his eyes and the hole of his mouth, half whistled and 
half groan. Never a whisper in the sea, half dance the spectre ship. Far clomb above the eastern bar, the horned moon, with one bright star almost between the tips. One after one, by the horned moon, listen, O oh stranger to me. Each turned his face with a ghastly pang, and cursed me with his ease. Four times fifty living men, with never a sigh or groan, with heavy thump, a lifeless lump, they dropped down, one by one. Their souls did from their bodies fly, they fled to bliss or woe. Every soul that passed me by like the fizz of my crossbow. I fear thee, ancient mariner. Fear thy skinny hand, as thou art long and lank and brown as is the ribbed sea sand. Fear thee in thy glittering eye, and thy skinny hand so brown. Fear not, fear not, thou wedding guest, this body drops not down. Alone, alone, all, all alone. Alone on the wide, wide sea. And Christ will take me to beyond my soul. Many men so beautiful, they all dead. Million slimy things lived on, and so did I. I looked upon the rotting sea, and I drew my eyes away. I looked upon the eldritch deck, and there the dead men lay. I looked to heaven and tried to pray, but or ever a prayer had gushed, a wicked whisper came and made my heart as dry as dust. I closed my lids and I kept them close to the balls like pulses beat for the sky and the sea and the sea and the sky lay like a load on my weary eye and the dead were at my feet. The cold sweat melted from their limbs and they rot, they reeked it there. The look with which they looked on me had never passed away. Orphan's curse would drag to hell a spirit from on high, but oh, more horrible than that is the curse in a dead man's eye. Seven days, seven nights, I swore the curse, as yet I could not die. The moving moon went up the sky, and nowhere did a path. Softly she was growing up, but a star or two beside. Her beams bemocked the sultry main, like morning frost is spread. But where the ship's huge shadow lay, the charmed water burnt all way, a still and awful red. Beyond the shadow of the ship, I watched the water snakes. They moved in tracks of shining white, and when they reared, the elfish light fell off in hoary flakes. Within the shadow of the ship, I watched their rich attire, its blue. Glossy green and velvet black coiled and swam, and every track was a flash of golden fire. Oh, happy living things, no tongue their beauty might declare. A spring of love gushed from my heart, and I blessed them unaware. Sure, my kind saint pitied me, and I blessed them unaware. The self same moment I could pray. And from my neck so free, the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea. Oh, sleep, it is a gentle thing we love from pole to pole. Mary, queen, the pretty days be young. She sent the gentle sleep from heaven. Slid into my soul. The silly buckets on the deck so long remained, I dreamt that they were filled with dew, and when I awoke, it rained. My lips were wet, my throat was cold, my garments all were damp. Sure, I had a dream, a dream. 
and still my body dragged. I moved and could not feel my limbs. I was so light, almost I thought that I had died in sleep and was a blessed coat. The roaring wind it roared far off, it did not come a near. With its sound it shook the sails that were so thin and sear. Up at the air bursts into light, and a hundred fire flags sheen. To and fro they are hurried about, and to and fro and in and out the star dance on between. Coming wind doth roar more loud, sails do sigh like set. The rain pours down from one black cloud, and the moon is at its edge. Hark, hark, the thick black cloud is cleft and the moon is at its side. Like water shot from some high crag, the lightning falls with never a jag, a river steep and wide. The strong wind reached the ship. It roared and dropped down like a stone beneath the lightning and the moon. The dead men gave a groan. They groaned. They stirred. They all unrolled. They spake. The helmsman steered. The ship moved on. Yet never a breeze up through. The mariners all gan work the ropes where they were wont to do. They raised their limbs like lifeless tools whose we were the task. The body of my brother's son stood by me, knee to knee. The body and I pulled at one rope. He said no. And I quaked to think of my own voice. I thought it would be. The daylight dawned. They dropped their arms and clustered round the mast. Sweet sounds rose slowly through their mouths and from their bodies passed. Around, around flew each sweet sound, then darted to the sun. Slowly the sounds came back again, now mixed, now one by one. Sometimes, a dropping from the sky, I heard the lavrock sing. Sometimes, all little birds that are, how they seemed to fill the sea and air with their sweet jargony. Now it was like all instruments, now like a lonely flute, and now it is like an angel's song that makes the heavens be new. It ceased, yet still the sails made on a pleasant noise till noon, a noise like of a hidden brook in the leafy month of June, that to the sleeping woods all night singeth a quiet tune. Listen, oh listen, thou wedding guest, Mariner, thou hast thy will, for that which comes out of thine eye doth make my body and soul to be still. Never sadder tale was told to a man of woman born. Sadder and wiser thou wedding guest, thou rise tomorrow morn. Never sadder tale was heard by a man of woman born. The mariners all returned to work as silent as before. The mariners all gan pull the ropes, but look at me, they know, thought I, I am as thin as air. They cannot be behold. Till noon we silently sailed on, yet never a breeze did breathe. Slowly and smoothly went the ship, moved onward from beneath. Under the keel, nine fathom deep, from the land of mist and snow, the spirit slid, and it was he that made the ship to go. The sails at noon left off their tune, and the ship stood still also. The sun right up above the mast had fixed her to the ocean, but in a minute she gan stir with a short, uneasy motion, backwards and forwards half her length, with a short, uneasy motion. Then, like a pawing horse let go, she made a sudden bound. It flung the blood into my head, and I fell into a swound. 
how long in that same fit I lay, I have not been fair, but ere my living life returned, I heard, and in my soul discerned, two voices in the air. Is it he? Is this the man? By him who died on cross, with his cruel bow, he laid full low the harmless albatross. Spirit who bideth by himself in the land of mist and snow, he loved the bird that loved the man who shot him with his bow. That was a soft voice, soft as honey. Quoth he, the man hath penance done with his bow. That bideth by himself in the land of mist and snow, he loved the bird that loved the man who shot him with his bow. It was a soft voice, as soft as honey. Quoth he, man hath penance done, and penance more But tell me, tell me, speak again, thy soft response renewing. What makes that ship drive on so fast? What is the ocean doing? Still as a slave before his lord, the ocean hath no glass. His great bright eye most silently up to the moon is cast. If he may know which way to go, if she guides him smooth or grim. See, brother, see how graciously she looketh down on him. But why drives on that ship so fast, without an way or wine? Hair, hair is cut away before, closes behind. Fly, brother, fly, more high, more high, or we shall be belated. For slow and slow that ship will go when the mariner's chance is abated. I woke, and we were sailing on as in a gentle weather. It was night, calm night, the moon was high, the dead men stood together, all stood together on the deck, for a charnel dungeon fitter, all fixed on me their stony eyes that in the moon did glitter, the pang, the curse with which they died, had never passed away, I could not draw my e'en from theirs, they turned them up to pray. And in its time the spell snapped, and I could move my ear. I looked far forth, but little saw of what might else I see. Like one that on a lonely road doth walk in fear and dread, and having once turned round walks on, and turns no more his head, because he knows the frightful fiend doth close behind him tread. But soon there breathed a wind, Sound my motion ran. Its path was not upon the sea in ripple or in shade. It raised my hair. It fanned my cheek like a meadow gale of spring. It mingled strangely with my fears, yet it felt like a welcoming. Swiftly, swiftly flew the ship, yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly flew the breeze. On me alone, look. Oh, dream of joy, is this indeed the lighthouse top, I say? Is this the hill? Is this the kirk? Is this mine own country? We drifted o'er the harbour bar, and I would softly pray. Oh, let me be away, my God. Oh, let me sleep all day. The harbour bay was clear as black ice. So smooth and strewn, and on the bay the moonlight lay, and the shadow of the moon. The moonlight bay was white all o'er, till rising from the same, full many shapes that shadows were, like as of torches came. A little distance from the prow those dark red shadows were, but soon I saw that my own flesh was red as in a glare. I turned my head in fear and dread, and by the holy rood the bodies had advanced, and now before the mast they stood. They lifted up their stiff right arms, they held them straight and tight. Each right arm burnt like a torch, a 
torch that formed upright. Her stony eyeballs glittered on in the red and smoky light. I prayed and turned my head away, forth looking at the form. There was no breeze, no waves against the shore. Rock shone bright, the curve no less than stacked hands above the rock. The moonlight steeped in silentness, the steady weather cock. And the bay was white with silent light. Till rising from the same, full many shapes that shadows were, in crimson colours came. A little distance from the prow those crimson shadows were, I turned my eyes upon the deck. O oh Christ, what saw I there? Each course lay flat, lifeless and flat, and by the holy moon a man all loved. A seraph man on every course. Seraph man, each waved his hand. It was a heavenly sight. They stood as signals to the land, each one a lovely light. This seraph band, each waved his hand. No voice did they impart, no voice, but oh, the silence sank like music on my heart. Eftsoons I heard the dash of oars, I heard the pilots cheer. My head was turned perforce away, and I saw a boat appear. Then vanished all the lovely lights. The bodies rose anew. With silent pace, each to his place, came back the ghastly crew. The wind that shade nor motion made on me alone it blew. The pilot and the pilot's boy, I heard them coming fast. Dear Lord in heaven, it was a joy that dead men could not blast. I saw a third. I heard his voice. It is the hermit, good. He singeth loud his godly hymns that he makes in the wood. He'll shrieve my soul. He'll wash away with the albatross's blood. This hermit good lives in that wood which slopes down to the sea. How loudly his sweet voice he rears. He loves to talk with mariners that come from a far country. He kneels at morn and noon and eve. He hath a cushion plump. It is the moss, the holy high edge, the rotted old oak stump. The skiff boat neared. I heard them talk. This is strange, I trow. Why are those lights so many and fair that signals made but now? Strange, by my faith, the hermit said. And they answered not our cheer. The planks looked warped, and see those sails, how thin they are and sear. I never saw aught like to them unless perchance it were the skeletons of leaves lag my forest brook along, and the ivy tod is heavy with snow, and the owlet whoops to the wolf below that eats the she-wolf's young. Dear Lord, it has a fiendish look, the pilot made reply. I am afeard. Push on, push on, said the hermit. Cheerily. The boat came closer to the ship, but I nay spoke, nay stirred. The boat came close beneath the ship, and straight a sound was heard. Under the water it rumbled on, still louder and more dread. It reached the ship, it split the bay, the ship went down like lead. Stunned by that loud and dreadful sound which sky and ocean smoked, like one that hath been seven days drowned, my body lay afloat. But swift as dreams myself I found within the pilot's boat. Upon the whirl where sank the ship, the boat spun round and round, and all was still, save that the hill was telling of the sound. I 
moved my lips. The pilot shrieked and fell down in a fit. The holy hermit raised his eyes and prayed where he did sit. I took the oars. The pilot's boy, who now doth crazy go, laughed loud and long, and all the while his eyes went to and fro. Ha ha! quoth he. Full plain I see. The devil knows how to row. And now all in my own country I stood on the firm land. The hermit stepped forth from the boat, and scarcely he could stand. Oh, shrieve me! Shrieve me, holy man. The hermit crossed his brow. Say, quick, quoth he, I bid thee say, What manner man art thou? Forthwith this frame of mine was wrenched with a woeful agony which forced me to begin my tale, and then it left me free.
boy who now doth crazy go laughed loud and long and all the while his eyes went to and fro ha ha quoth he full plain i see the devil knows how to row and now all in my own country i stood on the firm land the hermit stepped forth from the boat and scarcely he could stand oh shrieve me shrieve me holy man the hermit crossed his brow Say, I bid thee say, what manner man art thou? Forthwith this frame of mine was wrenched with a woeful agony which forced me to begin my tale, and then it left me free. Since then, at an uncertain hour, how oft times and how few, that anguish comes to tell, I pass like night from land to land, I have strange power of speech. The moment that his face I see, I know the man that must hear me, to him my tale I teach. What loud uproar bursts from that door? The wedding guests are there, but in the garden hour, the bride and bride make a singing power, and hark the little vesper bell, which bidders me to prayer. So hath been alone, why might see? So lonely twas that God himself scarce seemed to be. O oh, sweeter than the marriage feast, it is sweeter far to me to walk together to the kirk with a goodly company. To walk together to the kirk and all together pray. Great father Ben, old men and babes, and loving friends and youths and maidens again. Farewell. Farewell. This I tell to thee, thou wedding guest. He prayeth well who loveth well both man to thee. Farewell, farewell. But this I tell to thee, thou wedding guest. He prayeth well who loveth well both man and bird and beast. He prayeth best who loveth best all things both great and small. For the dear God who loveth us he made, and love us all. The mariner whose eyes bright, whose beard with age is hoar, hoar is gone. And now the wedding guest turned from the bridegroom's door. He went like one that hath been stunned, and is of sense forlorn, a sadder and a wiser man, he rose the morrow morn. Căci m-am pierdut adânc în ea, Când în șoptești mă trec fior, Căci te-am pierdut de atâtea ori,
să nu plâng Te știi că de greu mi-a fost Aproape să nu te simt Nu se mai poartă bazmaua așa ca pe vremea ta Ei, da Da, chiar și făgăraș să mănâncă altfel la oraș Ia să vedem Bun așa? Da, făgăraș Aș pentru mofturi de ora Făvat plac de țară Vrea bun? Vrea ca la țară Ai met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor, well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things the hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor Well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, and the heart that failed. And on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my work. mighty and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the low and level sand.